Um, because it's a lot of work and we're, you know, busy people and we all, we'll talk about it tomorrow. In the meantime, I would like you all to take a look at this picture behind me. Um, any of you who are not familiar with a site called Get Sparked, uh, getsparked.org, you should take a look. It's a prompt-based partnership um, poetry or art, art site. So they, you get paired with somebody and it's a... You send somebody an inspiration piece, either visual or, or written or musical, and then they respond, and they likewise send you an inspiration piece, and you respond. So you end up with a lot of great work or fun work or things you never, ever, ever would have otherwise written, like what I'm about to read you. Um, the photo is by a friend of mine who's a photographer. Her name is um, Bridget Fahey O'Brien. This is not an example of the quality of her work. This was entirely conceptual, so she really does take some beautiful pictures too, but she sent me that and I wrote this poem called Second Honeymoon. All right, hold on. No peeking. I want it to be a surprise. You're going to love it, baby. Hold on. Not yet. All right. Now you can look. There. Isn't that great? See how much I love you, baby? What? You don't like it? What do you mean? All right, all right, listen. Give it a chance. Hear me out. Sure, it's unorthodox. I'll give you that. And I'm not saying it's forever, just until we rebuild the real house. It's got space for everything we need. Well, everything I need anyway, because, you know, all I need is you, Angel. And I already talked to the neighbors. They don't mind. Well, yeah, Susie and Steve were high, sure. And no, no one answered at the house on the other side, right. But still, no one said no. Look how close to the car will be. I can help you with groceries real easy. You won't have to yell for me to get up out of that chair, see? All you have to do is hand them to me from the window. Okay, fine, I'll do the shopping and hand everything to you. Whatever you want, sweetie. Well, no, no, there's no running water. But I got the hose snaked right up through a seam in the back. Okay, I'm sorry, maybe snaked wasn't the right word. Fine, we'll do takeout every day. No cooking for my girl. Baby, come here, listen, listen. It'll be cozy, just you and me. No ringing phones, no TV. I'll even give up football. Just us, baby. See, I know what you like. I can do this. You can do this. You want curtains? Fine, I'll get you some curtains. I have no idea how I'll hang them, though. Okay. <laughs> Now, I'm sorry you'll have to keep looking at that while I read the rest. The brothers are not related to it at all. Um, this next one is called Regional Roadmaps and Redemptions. And this was written uh, on a bunch of us went to the Turner Cassidy Literary Festival a few years back. It is sadly no more. It was a wonderful event. I'm sorry it's not happening anymore. But this I, I wrote in response to some ex experiences we had there. Midget races. Midget strip clubs, just picked cantaloupe by the shopping cart, schnitzel and stroganoff, Irish Alfredo, various species of waterfowl and large winged insects, fireworks, gun shows, invitations from strangers to spend the night at a snake cabin. Let's face it, some things are just easier to find south of the Mason-Dixon line. After landing somewhere technicolor that definitely was not Kansas, I handed the check to the wrong waiter and received a local menu for our party in return. With a smile, I said, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a non-denominational church around here. Well, ma'am, consecrations and absolutions should be as easily had as a tax write-off for a rich man in this temptation-rife world. Am I right? We declined the snake cabin in favor of the schnitzel and set a novena to St. John the Apostle for the safe delivery to riders and redemption. All right, now this one. Okay, Stan invites me to these events solely to break the profanity barrier. It's been broken many times already this weekend, so I don't, I don't feel like uh, I'm as important now. But this one might push the boundaries a little more than usual. You know what? It's a new age. It's called a breach of etiquette. Um, I wrote this. Uh, in response to the um, Zimmerman verdict and the uh, Trayvon Martin case. And it feels to me, sadly, um, even more pertinent today. And uh, that makes me mad. 
a breach of etiquette. I called someone an asshole today on Facebook. Let's call him Dick, a friend of a friend. After which he said I must be angry, as if there's something shameful about being angry. I didn't comment further, didn't say, yes, Dick, I am angry. I am fucking furious because I see another dead black boy and no justice. I didn't say, twice in my life I've been pregnant, Dick, and cried with relief when I learned that all three of my biracial children would be girls. I cried, Dick, because I had been afraid I'd end up burying three black sons. And yes, you're right, Dick, that makes me angry. That should make me and pretty much everyone else angry. I didn't say, just another dead black boy whose life is worth less today than when he would only have counted as three-fifths of a man some 200 years back. That is some ass-backwards progress, Dick. I didn't say, so I guess we're both right, Dick. I am angry, and you are an asshole. Um, this one's angry, too, but it's a little, it's not really any nicer, sorry. <laughs> it's called steeped. They think I'm being derisive when I call them teabaggers, but I'm just being accurate. Studies have shown that when given a choice of six somewhat outre sexual acts, members of the Tea Party chose teabagging by a margin of five to one and with greater prevalence than what was seen in the submissive Dems with their safe words or the vanilla loving, no sprinkles Republicans. The data were strongly statistically significant, and Lancet reported all this several months ago. You'd think the liberal media would have run with the story, but you'd be wrong. The New York Times and Mother Jones scuttled it for fear that it would sex up the right, lend them some cachet, make them look oh so almost French. Teabagging polls well with straight, gay, bi, pan, trans, college kids who don't vote, and braggadocious blowhards who do. And this is the only other nasty one, and it's not so nasty at all. It's called Once Again in Syria. These men, all hormone-engorged testicles and calcium-fed bones, were once children, subject to angry moods, clumsy thrills, nighttime fears, easy to please with milk baths, grilled cheese, and French fries. Now, late to the party, they enter the room and act like paper tigers whose skimpy edges fold, even while the simple center cannot hold. The world waits for someone to write the lullaby that will sway them back to love, somnolent, and solemn. Okay, now we'll get into better stuff, more fun. <laughs> this is fun. This is something I wrote as a free write, and so I like to do this sometimes because, again, I like to uh, write things that you know, I'm not waiting for the muse. I don't really know where I'm going. I'm going to find a voice that I, I didn't otherwise have. It's called um, Ocean City Oncolysis. Now, um, I do medical editing as part of my, uh, my day job, my other persona. So I like to also incorporate some of those things into my creative work. Also, um, in case you haven't been able to tell, I'm from New Jersey. So uh, I do often write about places from my home state. Um, I haven't lived anyplace else, so <laughs> it's kind of all I got to work with. Ocean City on Colossus. The surf is boiling with jellyfish, rolling with sea glass, swimming with Saturday memories relived in the break and crash. It is Joe's birthday, and I hope it does go better than last year when he got sick. I bury my toes in Jersey sand and watch dolphins head north away from the reality TV crews. I'm supposed to pick him up at the airport tonight, but there's a heron in my sushi. How can I tell him the dream died long before remission became a quarter mile lap at the high school track? He can't taste metastases, won't finger the clean margin of the incision, is too scared to lick the slick skin of the tumor. The sun is making me dizzy. The seagulls have chased the sand crabs away. Okay. Now this one I just recently wrote. You're hearing it for the first time. I have to credit Joni Reese and Nathan Gunter for helping me out with a particularly perilous phrase, <laughs> which we're gonna hope doesn't stand up, but they, they, they helped me, so it's gonna be good. And um, I, I have been spending a lot of time with Bob Geldof lately. This is not a bad thing. Um, 
especially after 2016 took so many of our you know musical legends so i kind of want to uh, linger with him while he's still here um and i i was inspired to write this because i read the quote of his and it's in here but i'm responsible for two of the worst songs in history is what he said and i laughed when i heard it and then i felt so bad so i, I wanted to write this it's called to sir bob with love this poem is not about love, but taking in that mix, one part Dylan, two parts Van Morrison, a pinch of Jagger and a dash of Lord Byron is heady stuff. He said, I'm responsible for two of the worst songs in history. And he has a point. After all, he built punk progressions on Irish melodies. He stayed up all night, firing off love like rockets, prophesying psychopathic Mondays. But 1984 was a simpler time. One phone call to mid-year and three weeks later a song was written. One marathon recording session later, the brightest lights of British pop were throwing their arms around the world at Christmas time. Yes, those were simpler times. In these times, the editor in me fights the urge to change the bitter sting of tears to the bitter stream of tears. The socially aware mom in me acknowledges the blithe imperialism of wondering whether a multitude possesses consciousness of a calendar. Still, those were simpler times. And it was easy to believe that a song could change the world. Hearts and hands were open, and hope felt like more than an empty word in a candidate's slogan. For a few brief moments, the well-fed and the hungry shared the same table. It was a simpler time. Simple enough for Dublin's kinetic madman to flip off the world and feed it in one smooth gesture. Okay, and now 